Okay, so we have a PNG now on our desktop. So if I hit F11 to clear to our desktop, and if I double click on that PNG, it will open up in preview. And if I hit Command Plus, I can zoom in and I can see that now there is a soft white glow because I used the outer glow as my offset around my black line work on a light gray background because preview shows transparency not as a grid, but as light gray. Now I want to upload it to um, Photo Bucket. So I, I log into our class Photo Bucket. All of your computers should already be logged in. And then, very importantly, I need to navigate to the correct folder, right? So the correct folder is Exercise 1 Cartoon Jumble. You don't want to upload it anywhere else because we're not going to see it. What do we upload it as? So I'll give you the way to title it, right? But it's going to be the PNG that we upload, and then you'll title it within Photo Bucket. Now, if you're the best student, right, and you're following all the procedures that are asked for for organizing our files, which we talked a lot about last class, then already your PNG on the desktop has your name as the first thing. So even if you mistitle it or misplace it, all I would have to do is look at the file name to know whose work it is, right? But we also build in some redundancy. So in order to find the right folder, if you're ever in doubt, you can go to the library and then navigate using these side columns of these albums. And so Digital Art 1, Digital One Exercises, Exercise One Cartoon Jumble, right? This is actually the album. Right now it's empty. So what you're going to do is take your PNG, drag and drop it into that. That's for the class. My album is the instructor demonstrations. So I am going to do, go into this album where there are already examples. And as soon as someone uploads something, there will already be examples in the class folder, right? And I'm going to drag and drop it right here. So it's the same procedure to, to upload something, but just make sure you're in the right album for it. All right. Once it uploads, you have to find it. So I uploaded it, and now I have to recognize it. Oh, there it is. And then you click on it. And the reason you click on it is so you can actually give it a title. And the problem is if you upload something but you don't title it, I have to actually go in and download it and hope you named the file with your name to know who did it. And that's not how we want it to work. That's like submitting something to a gallery and never putting your name on it, right? And this is our gallery. This is how we show off our work until we print at midterm. So I want you to click on the title and then this is the format up on the, on the board. I want you to follow. Our semester code is capital S, capital P, two zero for spring 2020, then a space, and then your name. So now I'm gonna show you how black is fine, uh, but we can also add color in a few different ways, compositing, right? And notice the difference. You see how this has white around it? That's because these are JPEG files. And what we want is to not have any white around it. That's what a PNG does. It's free floating. That's what a PNG does, free floating. And the beauty of that is if we view it in what's called a slideshow mode, which is how we'll do our presentation critique, slideshow is on a black background. And so you want that offset to help show your work. So a JPEG will always have the full rectangle filled, but the PNGs will be free floating and transparent once they load. And so that offset really helps. And then Ty, you did a great job uploading it, but you just put it into the instructor's one instead of to the class one. So let's, let me show you how you can move it. And this is our introduction to Photo Bucket, right? And the only thing I don't want you to do in Photo Bucket is to delete anything, right? So if you want to get rid of something, you move it to trash. And I'll delete the extra trash I accidentally made. So that's the trash at the bottom. All right, so 
How can you move it if you upload to the wrong place? And that happens a lot. How can you move it to the right folder? So if you are not the instructor of the class, but you put it into the instructor's folder, let's see, you want to put it into just the main folder. So you just grab it, drag and drop it, and put it in the right folder. And that's all there is to it. Now what can happen when you move it is it will break your title. So then you want to go find it and make sure that it's titled still. And it's not. So then you want to go in and retitle it. All right, looking good. So how can we have some more fun with it? How can we add color? Well, just like we added um, the white offset, we can also do other things with layer styles. And if we want to just fill it with a color other than black, we can do color overlay. So if you click on color overlay, you can select a color, any color. And it's like it's cut out of a colored piece of paper, right? Um, what I like to do is do a color overlay, but then take the opacity of that color overlay to about half. So now you can see that color overlaid on black. So it just makes it a cool, you know, darker blue. And then I like to add a little variation to that flat color. So something else you can do is called gradient overlay. And gradient overlay, you can click on the gradient options and you can make your own. But let's do something really outlandish, right? A big rainbow. And let's take that opacity way up. And then I can have it be linear. So it's a gradation that goes across just like this. Or I can do it radial, where it goes from the center. Or I can do it at an angle, which is kind of nice. Now, here's what's interesting. Now you see all these effects. There's a stroke, there's a color overlay, there's a gradient overlay. If I double click to open the layer styles, I can play with the opacity of each of these things. So I can take the color overlay down just to show the gradient. I can take the color overlay up. And I can even play with different blending modes. Like pin light is a good one for this. Soft light. So you have lots of coloring options just within layer styles. And it's always giving you kind of a preview of what you're layering on top. So this is very, you know, digital effect heavy. But it's a nice way to just add some, some color. And then on the gradient, I can play with that opacity too and let kind of the black come through more. And of course, I can play with the style. And if you want to, you can play with your individual gradients as well. Okay, so next, yeah, I think I like linear. And then how would I save that? The same way I saved my black one. I turn off all the backgrounds. I have an offset still there. You can see it, right, the white. But this time I'm using a stroke instead of the outer glow. And I'm going to save it as a PNG to the desktop. But if I save it now, it will overwrite this one, right? It will say, do you want me to replace the older one? And I say, oh, no, 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 I want to keep that older one. So what do I do to make it so it doesn't replace it? I have to change the name a little bit. So I'm going to call this, you know, color one, PNG, to the desktop. Keep the defaults. Now, that's using Photoshop to fill in the color. And you can do other things. You can fill in textures. You can do. You can just go nuts with layer styles. We'll do a lot more of that when we get into logo design. But this is a compositing project, right? This is about using other people's pixels. So if I go back to Google and I go to a Google image list or image search, let's just search for a really cool background. So old. Um, so I'm going to look at the original kind of uh, image source. We could do this with any kind of background. And then I want to go to images and go to tools and say only the largest of the large. And then I want something that's like really big, like 2,000 pixels. 
even more and has a lot of color. Here we go, nice. And then I do the same thing, I right click, I open it in a new tab, just like we did for our original source. I right click and I open image in new tab so I can see it at full resolution. And is that great quality? It's not great, but it will work as a background color, right? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now cut out my design from this piece of paper. So I'm gonna drag this to the desktop. I'm gonna minimize Chrome. And on the top of everything, I'm gonna drag this on. And remember how I said Arturo Herrera, kind of the, the artist that inspired these? He would often cut his designs out of felt. This is like choosing wrapping paper or choosing a big felt to cut your design out from, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and flip it so that the words aren't as readable. And I might even do other things to it once I rasterize it, like um, just because I don't want the words to really distract. So I might go to blur and Gaussian blur. And that's one of the only filters we'll use. And blur it quite a bit. So I'm referencing the colors and that energy, right? But I don't want the words to be readable. And then I'm gonna go to image and I might do auto tone. And if I wanted a little bit more vibrant, I go to hue saturation, we're gonna learn all this stuff. You can just play, right? Change the hue slightly. There we go. Okay, so now I have this kind of wrapping paper. This is the beauty of it. I can go to my image, the one that's merged and cut out, and I can select with contiguous turned off, just like I got rid of all the whites. I can also select empty space, and there's nothing that Photoshop likes to select more than empty space, right? It can't make a mistake. You're just saying select everywhere there isn't a pixel. So I do that, and now I can go to select at the top and say inverse, which is the opposite. So if you select the empty pixels, and then you say the opposite, now this will select every pixel that's actually there instead of the whole rectangle. Now, I can move that selection, remember? Because selections move between layers. So now it's just the selection. I'm gonna move that onto my wrapping paper. It's like a cookie cutter. This is complicated, we're gonna get better at this kind of thing. And then I'm going to use duplicate, which is a shortcut we're gonna use a lot. It's Command J. That will take whatever is selected in the selected layer and duplicate it onto a new layer. So if I do that, Command J, Voila, I have a cookie cutter of my image, right? And if I put it on a background, it looks like that. And then I can add underneath it the effects, the, the stroke, the outer glow, one or the other. Right? That's it with the outer glow. It's a little overpowering. Let's look on gray. Or I can add all the color effects, right? Like that. And that looks pretty good. And now, even though I have this color cutout, I can play with the opacity of that color cutout and let the, the other colors kind of come through. Or I can play with the blending mode and let the other colors come through a little bit. So it just gives a little bit more variety to it. And maybe that's my favorite. So maybe that's the one I now say, file, save as. This will be color two, not as a Photoshop, but as a PNG to the desktop, command D to the desktop. So now I have three versions. I want you to pick one version that you upload. All right, so, if I open all three of them off of the desktop, just double click, they'll open in preview and I can kind of compare them. So there's the black with the, the slight light offset. There's the just Photoshop color and there's the composited color kind of layered on the Photoshop color. And you can just imagine all the possibilities. And I like that one. I think that's the one I'm gonna upload. So, 
that's number two. There.